guided tissue regeneration in mucogingival surgery, use of a resorbable membrane in the surgical treatment of gingival recessions. The patient presents a pure gingival recession of 4 mm, Miller first class, together with integrity of the interproximal mesial and distal bone peaks, which are coronal to the amylocementum junction. The operation starts by making two horizontal incisions perpendicularly, therefore not beveled, about 2 mm coronally with respect to the most apical point of the gingival recession. The two horizontal incisions are joined by an intracircular incision. Two divaricated vertical incisions are made starting about 5 to 6 mm apically to the mucogingival line. Using a CTGO and rotating movements and subsequently using a Pritchard, a full thickness flap is raised for about 4 to 5 mm. The residual papillae are disepithelialized firstly using a 15C blade with a long external bevel both on the mesial and the distal aspect subsequently using a 40 micron diamond burr the disepithelialization process is completed After having made an intracircular incision, the papillae are raised firstly with a 15C surgical blade and then with a CTGO to create space underneath the tissue and to maintain the most coronal part of the membrane in firm direct contact with the underlying bone surface. Raising the flap, the exposed root is carefully planed with curettes and rotating instruments with the aim of carrying out the etiological treatment. At this point a cylindrical burr is used with a diameter of 0.8 mm, which is the same diameter as the Eticon PDS2 suture. It's mounted on a low speed handpiece to create four holes in the interproximal spaces adjacent to the root. The two coronal holes must only be a couple of millimetres more coronal with respect to the point of maximum bone recession and at the same time a few millimetres apical to the amylocementum junction. With a very small tungsten carbide burr, the cortical is perforated with small holes to expose the underlying medullar cavity. At this point, two segments of the PDS2 suture are used to create a dome above the root surface. The extremities of the two PDS2 segments are shortened and inserted within the four holes to create the desired dome effect. The resorbable membrane resolute is finished and moulded above the exposed root in order to completely cover the bone defect extending about 3 to 4 mm beyond this vestibular defect with the aim of positioning it firmly to the bone base. Once the desired curvature has been obtained, the membrane is positioned below the previously disepithelialized and peeled papillae. It is sewn to the amylocementum junction around the tooth with a simple interrupted suture, a sling suture, using a resorbable suture of polyglycolic acid Dexon-2. The resolute membrane thus results purposely raised from the root surface to create the dome effect due to the two resorbable fragments of PDS-2 suture which cross over above the root surface. The periosteum is cut into at the base of the trapezoidal flap. The periosteum is cut into at the base of the trapezoidal flap, initially along the entire length of the flap and then in a more purposeful way 
to allow significant coronal movement. The passivity of the flap is tested by means of two surgical pincers. Only when the coronal margin is able to reach the occlusal plane of the tooth concerned is the flap judged to be sufficiently passive and fit to be sutured. The mixed thickness trapezoidal flap is sewn with EPTFE thread, once again using a sling suture. The mixed thickness trapezoidal flap is sewn with EPTFE thread, once again using a sling suture. The trapezoidal peduncle is fixed in position with periosteal stitches on the mesial and distal sides. The oblique apical coronal direction of these interrupted periosteal stitches maintains the adequate passivity of the flap. Surgical dressing is not applied to the completed suture and ice packs are also not advised in order to avoid any pressure. After a healing period of 12 months, complete root coverage can be seen, which completely satisfies the aesthetical needs of the patient. Comparing the clinical situation before the operation with the result obtained, it is possible to see not only the root coverage obtained, but also that the band of keratinized tissue is greater and of a better quality.